So following on from the previous video about formulas, we're going to move into the wonderful world of functions. So just to recap, what's the difference between a formula and a function? A formula is generally um, done by calculating individual cells together. So for example, if I wanted to add rent, food, telephone and internet together, I may want to say um, equals B3 plus B4 plus B5 plus B6. Now if you've got a large number of values that you want to add together, it would take forever for you to add. So imagine you've got from there down to there that you want to add together. That's a large amount of um, formula. So your formula would spread all the way across the formula bar because you're going to have to individually itemize each cell that you're after. So what we can do instead is we can actually look towards functions. And just purely by me highlighting in this demonstration, there are actually functions on your screen at the moment, which you may not have um, known what they're called before. If you actually look down on your status bar at the bottom, um, in some cases you may not see a status bar. If that's the case, you may need to go into the view menu and re-enable it. Um, but you should see down the bottom here, I've actually got it already saying the average um, number is 130. The number account of cells which are populated is 4. And the total cost is 520. So that's actually adding it all up together. They are functions. Now what you can do, um, this is pretty much dependent on the version of Excel you're using, but I would imagine if you're seeing this at the bottom, you can control this. If you right click on any of those values which are appearing at the bottom, you should be able to choose other styles of function available. So for example, I may want to know what the maximum number is. So if I just select that and just um, click away, can you see now I've got a max field. So it's telling me out of all those cells that I've highlighted, the maximum value being displayed in that range is 300. Okay, so that's all well and good. And this is like a very quick ready reckoner for you. So you can highlight all these cells and say, okay, what's the total? Well, it's 6,000 or 7,000. Um, but what we could do instead is actually store these functions in the spreadsheet. And this is done relatively straightforward. So what we've got here is a spreadsheet that you can obtain from um, the post on my website. Um, you can go to the website by going to this wonderful little um, watermark in the top right hand corner. Um, and if you go on there and go to the relevant post, you'll see it clearly signed, um, at which point you'll be able to download um, this particular example. You don't have to download it. However, it will help out because I'm going to be whizzing through this um, spreadsheet to do all sorts of different functions. So, okay, so what have we got then? Well, we've got this total line. So what I want to do is I want to add all of my costs up together. So what shall we do? Well, um, we can actually type it in, or more likely than not, you would actually use a special um, button on your toolbar. Now, dependent again on the version of Excel you're using, but you should all see on your toolbar somewhere the sigma sign, which is sort of like a Roman numeral style of a letter E. And if I hover over it on 2007, and it actually shows you what it's going to do and it just simply says it's going off screen on the recording but it says display the sum of selected cells directly after um, the selected cells. Well I haven't got anything selected so do I really need to highlight all of this? Well let's just try it without so I'm just going to click on to this blank cell here and I'm just going to click on the auto sum button. Now what you can see it does is it immediately works out let me go up and find the first number on that particular column so it automatically highlights the range. Now notice the syntax here. It's B3 colon B7 which just basically means starting point to ending point. So there we go we've got our um, function highlighting those particular cells so if you just press return now all being well you get that 520 figure. So we really need these costs to be spread across all of them. So what we can do is we can look at copy and paste, but I'm going to leave that for another video specifically because there's um, a few catches in there that I would like to um, go through with you step by step. So what we could do instead is if you just highlight the remaining cells where we want the total to appear and click on auto sum, what it should do is it's smart enough to realize that I want to add up each column um, respectively. So let me just click on say this first cell, it's saying C3 to C7. Well, that's 
those cells and we go to that one it's d3 to d7 so you can see it's relationally going across the spreadsheet as we go and there you have it you've now got your totals fantastic so what we need to do now is put in your salary and I'll leave that totally up to you what you want now I'm going to pause the video and just type the salaries in um, and then if you could do the same and then we'll carry on from there Okay, so what I've done then is I've actually populated the salary field, and now it's just a case of on the remainder, I want to take one from the other. So I would say, okay, this will have to be a formula because there is no real specific function that subtracts from um, one value to the next. So what we would do is we'll just do equals and then we'll say um, total, or sorry, let's get it the right way around, salary minus total. And then when you press return, you should now see what's left over of your salary based on what um, your costs are. So what we can do very quickly is if you just copy that and then highlight your remaining cells and choose paste, what you should see is it's worked itself out for the remainder of the cells. So again, if you click on each one, you can see relationally it's doing C10 minus C8, which is these two cells and then D10 minus D8. So you're mixing and matching now between your formulas and your um, functions. But let's say over to the side here we want to actually work out averages. I want to know um, what my average rent cost was throughout the year and my average food um, bill and so on. So what we could do is go off to the side here and we want to do a different style of function where we are ranging the cells from here to here. However, what we want to do is not show the sum um, function, we want to do an average function instead. So I'm just going to go into this blank cell in N3 and then I'm going to go back up, up to this um, function option here again where it says auto sum. You may notice there's a little arrow next to it. Now if you click on that, this brings up most commonly used functions that you will ever use. And as you can see, next one down the list is average. So I'm just going to click on that. And again, what it's done is very smart. It's worked out because you're to the right of the data, it immediately highlights everything to the left. Now, if this is wrong, no problem. As you can see, it's highlighted it at the moment on screen. All we have to do is just drag over the cells we do want to do the average on. But in the case of this particular function, it was right all along. I want those particular cells. So I've got them highlighted and I'm just going to press enter. And there's your average. So what we could have done is again, if I just highlighted these cells here, go on the drop down, choose average, it should have worked it all out off to the side. Well, let's have a look though. As you can see, it didn't know what to do in this case going acrosswards. Can you see the average now is just on N3. So what you can do is just highlight inside the cell um, in the formula bar or double click and highlight um, the cell of N3 and then just drag with your mouse and then you override the particular cell with the actual range you do want. And again, press enter, that will sort it all out. And again, we'll have to do it for the remaining um, cells. So it's just a bit of practice for you. There is a better way of doing this and I'll show that on a separate video. So just make sure they're all done and we now have, oops, highlighted a little bit too far there and we do that. There you go, I've got my averages. So go ahead and just give it um, a um, name at the top and I'll just drag that a little bit bigger so it all fits in nicely. So again, we've got a total. Um, now, do you want to do a total average? No. What you more likely want to do is, again, do an average of the total lines here. So again, I'll just go and do average and press return. And again, average again down there, return. And then finally, one more average like so. And there you have it. You've now got a series of functions. And remember, everything you do now on these base cells, if you do an adjustment, so 54, let's say, you'll see immediately it will change the average off to the side as well as the actual remainder um, at the bottom. So it automatically is very dynamic um, going across. So I'm going to put that a little bit more reasonable again. So what do functions do? Functions basically work on a range of cells. So when we have a total value, which in includes and encompasses a large amount of cells that we want to add together in this case, we would use a function because I could have done it like this. I could have said equals B3 plus B4 plus B5 plus B6, but there's a lot of typing to get to the same um, sort of value. Whereas the total 
um, option at the bottom here is much easier because we just do a range of cells. There's also one other added advantage. One thing I forgot to put on here is my mobile bill or cellular phone bill. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on to this row here on the internet line and I'm then going to go to the insert menu and then I'm going to um, do rows. Apologies, my mistake. It's not the insert um, menu um, at the top. It's actually on the home menu. You'll see that you have an insert button. So in there, I'll say insert sheet rows. Now, all we're going to do is we're just going to put in cell phone. And I just want you to go ahead and start putting in some random numbers. So I'm going to say I've got a very cheap bill, but then when I went on holiday I got charged an extortionate amount because I was abroad and then I'll go back to cheap bills again but again a build up to Christmas what does everybody want for Christmas I'll have um, a large bill of 190 there um, notice what it's done. What it's done is because we've inserted this extra row, it hasn't given us, it's not smart enough to realize that we want to do an average on that cell. So we're going to have to do the average function again. But pay particular notice to the totals. You'll notice that the actual range has now adjusted. It's now saying B3 to B8, whereas before we did this, you may want to rewind the video, it actually said B3 to B7. So as long as you insert extra rows inside your range, it will also incorpor incorporate them. So there's no need to go back down and readjust your actual functions. That works on a column basis, but on a row basis, it sometimes gets it wrong like it has done here. So I'm just going to go to that blank cell, go back up here and choose average. So that sort of gives us our basics of um, how we would um, put everything together. What I want to just finish off now on is going on to another sheet, just discuss what the other functions are. And for this, I would like you just to put in um, any sort of random number. I'm going to go down to A10, so I'm just going to do 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. You get the idea. Um, down to 100. Now what we'll do is we'll just go back into the um, functions option and instead of choosing the options which are in here let's go to more functions let's see what we've got available. Now this will bring up a dialog box with um, say the most recently used selected. Now what I'd like you to do is just to show you I cannot cover them all on a video because let's just click on all and notice how small the slider becomes and I just want you just to scroll down and just see all the functions which are available in Excel, you'll be waiting quite a while to get to the bottom of the list. There is an awful lot you can do with functions. Now, the best way of looking at them is looking at them and categorized at the top. So, is it a date option? There will be a specific video on that. Is it a lookup and reference? Again, a specific video on that. So, this is going to take a while to master because there's just so much you can go through. Um, but the most common sort of options you will have is in the most recently used. And so, you've got some average max, min and so on. So if I just wanted to say the maximum value and I click on OK, it automatically works out I want A1 to A10. If I wanted to change that, no problem, you just highlight in the cells if you wanted to, um, like this. But what I want to do really is I just want to leave it on the A1 to A10, so I'll just delete that. Um, and the other thing with functions is you may want to actually put in a max of another range. So I could say I wanted B1 to B10. Notice the syntax at the top on the formula bar. I have now two ranges, so ultimately it will scan both ranges you've highlighted and then give you the maximum figure on both. So I'm just going to OK that. And then obviously I'm going to just put in 5000 and watch what happens to a11 here, you'll see it immediately just gives you the maximum value. So what I'd like you to do is play around with functions to see what you can actually come up with. There is a plethora of different commands, financial, statistical and so forth. Some of these are real rocket scientists um, functions and I'm not joking, I am being literal with that. Um, Excel spreadsheets can work out the gravitational pull of the earth if you wanted to. Um, so there's all sorts of functions you can do inside here and really depending on what your um, job is, 
you'll choose the appropriate one and you'll see um, functions which are specific to your particular particular job for example my father um, used to be in insurance and in the actual financial options a lot of these actually made sense to him straight away because he knew them because he uses them day in day out so this is sort of an overview of functions and I hope you've enjoyed this video um, in the next video we'll be covering much much more bigger and better things however as we've been talking all the way through this video um, series it's baby step baby steps to get started we'll get on to some real juicy spreadsheets later on so for now thanks for watching